Welcome back guys, the doctor is in, Dr. Sean here. This is part two, we're talking about deck terminology and more specifically, how to choose the right deck for you. If you're clicking on this right now and you haven't seen the other one, you might wanna check it out, especially if you don't know what head to mingle is, crook space, deck ends, concave, extrusion. If, you, if those terms are blah, 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 go check out the other video. If you already know what I'm talking about, either you watched the first part or you've been riding for a minute, you did your research, you're in the right place, especially if you're looking to buy a new deck and you wanna find the right one for you. So let's get right into it, boys and girls. Let's go head to toe, starting with the head tube. The most important thing with the head tube, besides compatibility, if you watched the other video, I talked briefly about the length and how that'll affect uh, building your scooter. And that one, there's really not much to do there. Just be very careful. You gotta measure the head tube, make sure you're not getting an HIC fork, because those are usually longer, and then trying to run an SES because you're gonna need a lot of spacers underneath it. Of course, email us will help you pick out the right thing. For head tube angle, you're looking at about 82.5 to 84. The less steep it is, the faster your whips are gonna go around. It takes a lot less effort to get that quad tail up around, maybe five tail ups, maybe six tail ups. I don't know, are you setting records out there? And you're probably gonna wanna be on 82.5 gonna whip around a lot faster. But also the bars are gonna be a little bit more in your lap. If you're going all the way to 84, the whips are gonna be a little bit harder, but don't worry, you can still do them. I know a couple people like Alex Lopez, team rider, he can still do a trip whip flat and he's on a box cutter. So not gonna stop you, just could make it a little bit easier. But with the steeper head tube, the bars are gonna be a little bit further away from you. So that'll help make your whole scooter feel a little bit bigger and bars a little bit easier to toss. With the neck of the deck or the down tube, not really much for the style or anything. About only thing to look at is maybe strength and of course if you like the look of it. If you don't like seeing through this, probably gonna wanna get something solid. About the only thing that will matter for you is how much foot space it's gonna take up. That's gonna eat up about 3.5 inches as opposed to something like the Envy, just down to three. And even we got this Addict right here where these welds are gonna take up a whopping four inches of the deck. So that is gonna make it a little bit stronger, but just depends on what you're looking for. We'll get in depth on foot space in just a second. Now we're gonna talk about the blunt plate, crook space, nose blunt room, all that. So right here, we have an Envy deck that does not have caps welded on. It has a flat section right here, and this is a plastic insert. So this will make sliding nose blunts a little bit easier. And this insert also is gonna keep you from pinching in the edges of the extrusion. If you have a deck with open-ended extrusions, right here we have a John Marco Gatos deck, and solid right here, we'll add a little bit of strength, give you something to grind on, but these are open. A Couple other decks where this is a lot more open, so as you ride it more, they might pinch in a little bit. Not gonna affect the strength or anything, but if it's a big factor to you to have this stand nice, you might wanna get something fully capped we got like the Ethic right here with really angled caps and less crook space. So we can even talk about that right now. With the Ethic deck, for your crooks, your nose blunts, we're gonna just measure the whole flat section and that's what we're gonna refer to as the nose blunt space. This one is about three inches. If you're just looking at crook space, we go from the middle of the deck to the end and that's 1.5 inches. If crook space, nose blunt space is really important to you and you're gonna want some that has the most possible, we have something like uh, the box cutter here. For nose blunt space, it's a whopping 5.5. It's completely straight across. No edges here like any of the other decks, just 100% straight across. If you wanna cut that in half, you got about 2.75 inches, cause math. A lot of styles there, a little bit personal preference in how you like to ride. Jumping on to the deck extrusion, you're definitely gonna be wanna paying attention to the width, the foot space, and the length. Foot space with kinda how we alluded to earlier with how much space the down tube is taken up is gonna be affected by where the brake starts and the down tube ends. Right here we have an Envy deck and an Ethic deck. And you can see the back end the Ethic deck is a little bit longer, but the Envy down tube is actually taking up a little bit less space. So it is a shorter deck, but when it comes to foot space, we're actually getting a little bit more on the Envy than we are with the Ethic. If that's a factor for you and you want the most foot space possible, you definitely wanna take a look at the specifications tab and not just judge it based off the length. A longer length of a deck doesn't always mean more foot space. Sometimes less 
is more. Next thing I'd like to talk about is concave. Concave is actually whether or not the deck is completely flat. In my own personal opinion, I think concave is great. Really helped me when I started learning my heel whips. Got a nice flick on it. But some of you out there just don't care. So if you have ridden a deck and it feels extra comfy when you stand on it, you kind of feel a little bit of a curve, that's a concave. For width, there's a range of 4.0 all the way up to 6.0 right now. Let's see if anyone goes above six, if they're daring. This is gonna depend on what style of riding, how you like to ride. I'll get into that in just a little bit. Now for dropouts, that's gonna be determined really, again, how you like to ride, but right off the bat, you want pegs, you're not gonna want a square end. You wanna do five O's but hate pegs, you're gonna want a square end. You're not sure, you can get something like this right here where take it off and you can put pegs on, save a little bit of weight, or you know, put those on and do some five O's. All right, let's get into the grunt of it. Knowing all that information, what determines the right deck for you? In my professional, and keep in mind, I am wearing a lab coat, opinion, it's gonna be based off of the discipline or style of riding you like. I'm going to oversimplify it and say there's basically three styles. You can probably guess the first two. We got park, we got street, and then I'm calling the last one just like a mixture. You know, you like to do both. I know there's all types of different kind of riding, but we're gonna keep it simple, three types. For park riders, you're the ones liking the buttercups, lots of tail whips, combos, bar, 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 whip, 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 whip. So if you're a park rider, you're gonna want the lightest and fastest whipping deck possible. That's gonna be something like the Prospect deck. The head tube angle on this, 82.5, as we spoke, it's gonna make the whips come around a lot faster and take less effort for you. It can be the difference between whip, rewind, rewind, and just whip, rewind. As for width, for part guys, it's really not that big of a deal. I say 4.5 is a pretty good width for our part guys. Otherwise, if you do like five wide for comfort, you're gonna wanna make sure you find one of those rare five wides that aren't too long. Because the longer your deck is, the more effort it's gonna be to whip. Of course, if you're six foot one, I've seen some big dudes in the park running 21.5 or 22, but if you're a little guy, I've seen people cut down prospect decks, make a whip a little bit faster. For the blunt plate and crook space, you guys most likely aren't caring too much. Again, I talked about you could keep this pretty, that's why they cut this a little bit out. That matters to you, that's worth the decision. Otherwise, I wouldn't pay too much attention to a crook space or blunt space. For the sides, Depending on the weight of the deck, you can get a little bit lighter if you angle the extrusion, like a lot of Ethic decks are, or some of the Attics. But if you're doing a lot of finger whips, people seem to like the flat sides. I ride something with an angled side. Finger whips are still good. A Little bit of a personal preference there. What do you like the look of? For the bottom, you guys aren't doing too many grinds, so flat bottom or rails. I don't really think there's a park deck yet that is a flat bottom. So really don't pay attention to it. As for the dropouts, you guys are gonna want the whips to come around as fast as possible. So you're gonna want something shaved. You're not gonna want a deck end in there. Some of you guys do ride maybe two pegs or one peg on the side. So that's gonna work out nicely for you. There's a couple of park decks that do have more square deck ends, like the Tristan Anderman deck. That deck is kind of more geared towards the older park riders who like to fly out really high above coping, do big tuck nose like Tristan Anderman. So that'll pretty much determine what makes a deck park and if it's for you, obviously you're gonna wanna base it off of your size. If you are 11 years old, you shouldn't get the biggest deck possible. If you're six foot one and you're trying to ride a prospect deck, it might be a little rough and you might wanna move up to 21.5, I would say by minimum. Now for our street dogs. You know who you are. Dickies are cuffed, Z Martini, Watch Edits, Northern Limited. You're supporting those dudes, you're going fast. You're getting haggard. You're filming on VXs. We know exactly what you want. Bigger is better. Something like the box cutter. Going with the head tube, it's gonna be 83 degrees. I think every once in a while they make like a 84 limited edition. Here you go. But 83 is a perfect balance of being able to still get those whips around. And also the bars are further away from you, looking great. You're probably running T-bars. Me too, I don't blame you. For the blunt plate, this is gonna be a little bit more personal preference. You guys probably aren't riding pegs, so this is gonna be your trick. You know toothpicks, you're gonna be doing crooks. And that's more, ride a couple decks at the skate park and see if you like the feeling of crooking on something completely straight across. A Little bit less room, like that one. And then even the siren deck, fountain decks, have a little bit of a curve to them. 
So it's all personal preference. When I didn't run pegs, I like the straight square blunt plate in the front. It just helped me lock it in and I stayed a little bit more straight. If you're getting a little more pitted into it, it doesn't matter as much. But pretty much all street decks are gonna be capped. For the deck extrusion, bigger is better. You're gonna wanna pay attention to the foot space, the width and the length. Width, I'm saying if, if you're calling yourself street, you're, you're out here, you got the cuff pants, you're wearing some cons, you don't want the biggest deck possible. You shouldn't be on anything below five. I mean, if you got a 4.8, 4.9, that's fine. I'm not gonna tell anyone. But five to six wide is where you should be at. It's comfortable. You don't care about not being able to get that extra whip rewind out. Go comfort, go strong, and don't forget to go long. I gotta say, there's a little caveat here. Caveat, caveat. If you're a little guy, I saw a dude, 12, 13 years old, yay high, leaving with a box cutter deck the other day. Really hyped on it. However, as he gets older, he doesn't have much room to get a bigger deck. If you're still growing, you're about to go through a growth spurt, maybe don't get the biggest deck on the market because once you get bigger, your deck's not able to grow with you. You don't want to get something that you may be able to handle. It. Like he was handling it. We rode the ledge for a little bit. Ledge. We rode the curb for a second and he was handling it. So I was really impressed. But once his shoes get from a size eight to a size 11 or 12, he's stuck on the same size deck. As for foot space, we already showed you what the difference in the head tube makes, how it's attached to the deck. So most of your street dogs, you're gonna want a little bit more foot space. And my street dogs right now, we're torn. Is it best to have a flat bottom like the box cutter or the native deck here? Or are grind rails still acceptable on a street deck? I mean, that's really up to you. I've seen people go from one back to the other and say, ah, oh, made no difference, or it's the best thing in the world, or I got stuck too much. Really just gonna have to go out there, try it, ask your homie if you can try his native or his box cutter. And I think the root deck's coming out soon. It has a flat bottom. Try it out, see if it's what you like. But the most important thing for my street dogs, you know, remember we said earlier, no pegs? Five O's are important to you. So you're gonna want square deck ends. And look at that right there. We got 2.25 solid inches of five O space. That's basically a peg on the back end, but you still get to call yourself street and say it's not a peg. Now you got a deck like this. Attic makes it, it's a street deck, but it's cut in the back for pegs, don't worry. They also make a deck that has more square dropouts to give you more 5.0 space. For wheels, for my street dogs, y'all are riding 110, so it really doesn't matter what deck you get, it's gonna be able to fit that 110 by 24 millimeter, so don't even worry about it. If you do want a little bit bigger wheels, pay attention to it, but then, are you really hash? And the last group, my personal favorite group, a little biased here, I like it a lot, is the mixture group. It's scootering, man. Ride some park, ride some street. It's all good. These are riders you're gonna see like Pepito, John Dev, myself, anyone that's got pegs, throwing some combos. And I think the perfect example is pretty much every rider out of Europe can boost a flare and then also truck a 27 stairs. Pretty much the head tube angle is up to you. I wouldn't say going 82.5. I think 83 is really good. If you're gonna go 82.5 on the head tube angle, you better be doing a lot of combos. I better see bar whips out of everything and whip bars like you got to throw them quick otherwise 83 to 84 you got that mad comfort and you're still able to throw some of the combos because you guys like the combos blunt cap not too important most likely if you aren't running pegs but a lot of this the mixture riders they have pegs on the blunt cap you're going to want it there just because most of the decks that fit what we require is going to have a blunt cap but you're gonna be riding pegs anyway, so it doesn't really matter that much. Where it does maybe matter is saving some weight. If you're not doing huge drops or anything like that, and you're gonna get extra technical, shaving the sides right there is gonna save you a lot of weight. So that's something to keep an eye out for, is if your weight is a factor to you in the mixture side, then any material you can remove is gonna help you out. If you're running some big drops, maybe you're gonna want a little bit beefier setup. For the width, my mix guys, I would say 4.75 is the lowest you should go if you're on the smaller side. Otherwise, comfort's really good, 4.95, 5.5, all the way up to six, I've seen it done. Siren, we got some technical people out there killing it on the siren. The length, same thing as I said before with the street dogs. Don't go right to the 23 for your first like mix kind of street deck. Maybe start out on the 22, but pretty much depending on your size, everyone should be around 21.5 
to 23 long if you're doing like the mixture riding. Foot space, you're gonna wanna maximize it because you're the mixed riding. You, you, you like to throw tricks, but you wanna be comfortable too. So keep an eye out on that. It's gonna be really important. And then where the difference between the purely street guys and the mixture of technical riding is, is that 5.0 space. Me, I really like pegs. So something like the box cutter, although I wanna buy it. Should I buy it? When I can get something like the attic deck that's already meant to fit pegs right there, easy squeezy, still give me everything I need, or the ethic deck. And a lot of you guys are still saying Envious Park, but depending on the size of the deck you get, you can get the small deck for the park riding, or you can get a pretty big deck for more of a mixed riding. All right guys, those are your three denominations as defined by me. You can flame me in the comments below if I, I forgot, like, oh yeah, what about Flatland, John Ray's, I'm sorry, you're probably gonna want pegs, so I'd call you mix. Maybe like a signature John Ray's Envy deck, that might work for you, I don't know. I'm just, just projecting here. You might like your own deck. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I hope that gives you a little bit more insight into what you need. We covered your park, your street, your mix riding. You know exactly what you're looking for. If you've never bought a deck before and you're on your complete, make sure you measure what you got going and kind of think like, you know, I rode my friend's scooter the other day and it was really comfy. How wide was his? How long was his? If you rode your, your older, older friend, he's six foot seven and he was on the biggest deck available and you're like, how do you ride that? Then you might wanna go somewhere in the middle. So, thanks for watching guys. Let us know what else you need to know. You know, the lab coat, I can take it on and off at any time. So take it off, go get some clips, you know, shut it down, put it back on, I'll inform you. Just let us know what you wanna see. Bye.